So let's transition this into understanding, not just licensing, but how, without your secret sauce, because I also know it's way customized, but some of the general guidelines to picking out some licensing opportunities that are there because it's so new that to me, I think many people are not seeing the licensing forest for the trees, so to speak. Yeah. Yeah. And so just to go to your point about what you said, you see a lot of companies dive into ad driven, whether what, whatever path you go down, if you're just doing it mindlessly, uh, you, you're going to have yeah. to be very lucky to be successful, you know? So that's why this mind process that I described in, in AI armor steps you very systematically from starting with what is your technology? What's innov innovative about it? What are your long-term business goals? And then developing an intellectual property strategy that's based on a combination of what's innovative about your technology and what your business goals are, rather than just developing some cookie cutter strategy like patent everything or patent nothing, or let's rely all on ads or let's rely all on the different business models. And in my case, as, a, as an intellectual property attorney, different kinds of intellectual property protection are going to be appropriate for different businesses with different technologies. And that's why mm. I developed this process, which develops a customized intellectual property strategy for each company rather than just using a cookie cutter approach. So as you said, things are very complex and, and customized. Let me just answer I'll give one example for, for licensing, Please. which is yeah. that, uh, let's say in the, in the case of AI, that, that you've got a company that's developed a new way of training a model like a neural network. Okay, you don't even have mm -hmm. to know what, what a neural network is. I'll say that GPT is a kind of neural network. All the big lar la yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, large language models are out there kind of neural networks. Let's say you've got a new method of training. But your company is planning to commercialize that through an app like a like a new type of a chatbot because you think, oh, because we can train this model more efficiently, we can get a better model, and that model could produce a better customer-facing chatbot. Uh, well, the mm. fact that your product that you're planning to sell as your first first version of a commercial product is going to take the form of a chatbot that applies the trained model doesn't mean that what you want to get intellectual property protection should be focused on that end user product. Instead, it might be valuable to you <laughs> to get a patent on the method of training the model because that method of training might be valuable to other businesses who use that training method for radically different products than you are going to use it for, namely a chatbot. 